Okay, for those of you who have seen my video, my modern, my modified Denon DRM 600, you'll know what this is. This is a tape deck that I have modified. It now has a sound on sound recording feature. Two times tape speed, which is three and three three and three quarter inches per second for ultra high quality recording and a variable speed control. I didn't have enough time to explain it completely in my last video so in this video I'm going to be showing you the wiring diagram for the motor speed control that I've put in and I'm going to show you how the cam system works. Now this is the back of the tape transport. It's a two motor system. There's one motor that drives the capstan flywheel via a belt and there's another motor that moves the tape hub spindles. As you can see I've taken the capstan flywheel out so you can see the parts a little better. The big gear you can see is part of the cam system that selects stop or play or music search modes and this is the capstan flywheel and as you can see there is a gear on it and that turns the cam gear to select the different functions the cam gear is not toothed all the way around that's so it can stop when it reaches the different functions there's also a lock that holds the gear in place when it mustn't be turned and when the gear needs to turn again the the lock is released and the little spring under the gear turns it just slightly so the teeth can make contact with the gear on the capstan flywheel and turn the gear to select a different function. This is the modification I made to get sound on sound. I drew this on MS Paint and this microphone does seem to be a bit too sensitive and it picks up too much treble but anyway it's a very simple circuit. As you can see, there's the connection to the PCB, a switch, and the erase head. So I can turn the erase head on or off when it's recording. So for sound on sound, the switch is in the off position so no electricity goes to the erase head so the tape doesn't get erased. For normal recording, the switch is in the on position so the erase head erases the tape and the recorder makes a normal recording. This is the speed control circuit. This part at the bottom is the motor. I've also labelled the A, B, positive and negative connections. I don't know how well you can see this on YouTube. Um, there should be a thing under the video saying watch in high quality, so if you can't see it very well, try the high quality and it should be, you should be able to see it better. But anyway, in this circuit you can see how the motor is connected to the potentiometers and the switches. The two potentiometers you can see at the top are actually one. It's a dual gain potentiometer. It has two tracks instead of one. It used to be the volume control out of a stereo but um, it's now for controlling the motor speed on the tape recorder. Now for normal speed playback, the, the switch at the bottom is in this position and the switch above it is in this position. So the circuit path only goes through one track on the potentiometer and the motor runs at normal speed which makes the tape run at the normal 1 and 7 8 inches per second. For the high speed, the switch at the top is in this position and this time the circuit path goes through both tracks of the potentiometer so the resistance is doubled which in turn makes the motor spin twice as fast so the tape goes at three and three quarter inches per second it doesn't work this way with all motors but with the motor I've put in there it does now for the very speed the switch at the bottom is in this position and this is the circuit path and if you remember from the board which I mounted these on the shaft of the of this potentiometer is accessible so it can be it can be used to manually adjust the tape speed 
which is good for voice effects and um, if you want to record at a slow tape speed to save to save space. One thing I didn't mention on this uh, circuit is that all the potentiometers are 20 kilo ohm. With other motors, they may need to be less. They may they they need to be more, but a 20 kilo ohm seems to suit this motor. So anyway, and that concludes the explanation of the diagram.